Thanks for everyone's feedback in our previous DFE video, especially the cost of timing charge of the DFE. Therefore, in this video, I'm going to show the image of why you may need a floating tap or dual summer tricks in the DFE image to close the timing. Let's revisit the DFE's challenge of closing the first tap timing in one UI. As we know, the whole group delay includes the same first plus 2 delay PCK2Q, feedback path delay PFB, summing notes settling time PSUB, and same first setup time PSetup. Take the two tap DFE as a simple example and assume the channel may only have two post cursors. To get rid of the two post cursors, both taps must meet the timing. But as you can see, the input analog signal could be only a 50 to 200 millivolt peak to peak differential and a sample input. On the other hand, the simplest output would be in a full swing, which is also the input of the next tab. If we look at the difference between the first and second tab closely, we notice the difference in their simplest calculated delay and their input swing. Please be advised that the simplest input swing impacts the simplest clock to QDA, which would be shorter while the input swing is greater, and vice versa. For example, the second tap delay will be only 20 picoseconds, since the second simplest input swing is one ball at a digital level, but the first tap delay could be 35 picoseconds with 400 millivolt peak to peak differential input, or could be even 65 picosecond if the input swing was only 50 millivolt peak to peak differential. So, the critical timing of the cross loop is at the first tap for sure. Another intuitive image for you is that the first sampler needs to take a tiny input swing to convert or reject to the full swing by the positive feedback. Therefore, a simple delay image might tell you a greater input swing may take a shorter time to reach the full swing at the output. But a smaller input swing should take a longer time to reach the full swing at the output. I believe you should be able to know how to improve the timing. Think about your swing images for 5 seconds. Correct. Adding an amplifier to increase the input swing of the sampler would help decrease the clock to QDA. And that's part of the reason we need a CTOE before the DFE described in our Why Not? DFE only video. Besides the clock to Q delay, what else could be the first tap timing challenge? Think about the summer settling image for 5 seconds. Bingo! The settling time of the summing node may take a longer time if the summer's output or sampler input capacity of loading is heavy causing a big RD times C sum time constant. To be clear, in the summer and its current image, the ID1 and ID2 begin to switch current at time TA. Once the decision of the sampler output was feedback to the summer input, then the current switch would fully settle on the TB after the T sum. The summer amplifier image will show you that more tap connected would have more capacitance at the summer output and 
degrade its bandwidth or increase the settling time T sum. Unfortunately, only two types might not be logistic and we might need the number of types up to 14 or even higher. Why do we need so many tabs? Think about the reflection image for 5 seconds. Right, reflection. In a theory, there's always an impedance is created either from the patch or connector. Therefore, in the frequency domain, you can see a few bumpy response because of a discontinuity. On the other hand, in a time domain, the reflection may result in a single pass input in a few residual passes at the output at different time during the effective round trip. Obviously, those residual passes due to the reflection also contribute to the intersymbol interference eyesight of the main cursor D0. Fortunately, the DFE can remove loss eyesight effectively in the discrete time, since that discontinuity property will not change quickly. However, in this example, we need to deal with the eyesight cursor at 3 UI, 6 UI, 9 UI, or even 12 UI in other cases. You may need to deal with longer eyesight pulse cursor. So, a two type DFE is not enough. In our experience, for 32 gigabit per second series, we might need a 14 type DFE to accommodate most of the patch and connectors in a link. So, the loading at the stamming nodes is very heavy. What can we do? Think about the timing priority images for 5 seconds. From the timing priority image, we know the tightest timing will be the first step timing because of a long clock to GDA in the sampler and the tiny input suite. And then we could try to reduce the tab 1's summing node settling time. On the other hand, we know the show clock to GDA in the sampler flops and the second or the rest of the tabs or into the full input stream. And then we are okay to increase those tabs settling time at the summing node. Do you know how to prioritize the timing and implement it in the summer circuit image respectively? Correct. We may need two summing amplifiers and split the feedback path into two groups. In our example, we put a tab 1 feedback path and a summer 1, which is close to the sampler and has the shortest closed loop delay. We will put the rest of the tab from tab 2 to tab 14 feedback path and a summer 2, which is far from the sampler and even has a longer summer settling delay, which is okay. Unfortunately, the wrong trip of a reflection could be a long distance, such that we may need more taps. For instance, 32 taps. Is this split summing now still a workable loading engine? Of course not. But before fixing the heavy loading from lots of number tabs, let's check the image of a long long trip during the reflection event. Under a highly reflective channel image, the time domain pass response image not only shows non-zero eyesight at 11 UI delay, but also a noticeable big eyesight at 30 UI delay. Anything else? Yes, the ISI around the time duration between 13 UI and 28 UI is almost zero. Therefore, 
We don't even need to provide the feedback path on roast house, but only provide the feedback path around roast tab 11 and tab 30. This real reflection image may tell us implementing the whole 32 tab DFE might be unnecessary and even fail the DFE cross timing at any tab. The second to 30 second, not just only the first tab. Do you know how to implement the DFE tab in a fastball imagery? Think about the multiplexing or selection of the images for 5 seconds. Bingo! By adding the multiplexer max and the tab selection large, we could select the physical feedback path to the summing node from those available delay data in the ship registers. In addition, we must accommodate lots of different effective channels. Therefore, an adaptation engine should be included as usual, such that the DFE can converge to the optimal tab location and the corresponding coefficients. Let's show the 14 tab DFE along with the speed summer images completely. The example image is a 14 tab DFE with the first tab connected to the summer one and the second tab to the 14 tab connected to the summer two. Since the first to the fifth tab will cancel the eyesight without reflection or smooth channel response, we could directly connect those tab to the summer without going through those marks to avoid a trade, especially the first tab for sure. We use the rest physical 6 to 14 tab as 14 tab. Therefore, ROS rest tab may come from the 32 bit ship register. I'll put an max to implement another 714 tab DFE ranging from 6 to 32. With the help of adaptive engine, the 714 tab was selected from the 14 tab group 1, 10, 11, and 12 UIDS, and group 2, 29, 30, 31, and 32 UIDS based on the internal eye major feedback mechanism. Again, owing to both the speed summer and the 14 tab tricks, we can close the DFE timing easy and cancel the defective eyesight effectively with little design overhead at the same time. Beside the performance and speed enhancement of the many tip DFE for highly defective channel, what are the other benefits? Correct, it's power. The power consumption of the DFE will increase repeatedly, along with the increased DFE tab count in a nonlinear relationship. Then, designing an energy efficient and many tab DFE is very challenging. But fortunately, the folding tab can mitigate a power issue. Besides the performance and power, you might add another area that benefits one of the PPA. Probably you could think of the reflection image again for 5 seconds. Bingo! Even though the eyesight negative from the reflection around the 11th and 30th post cursor is noticeable, the corresponding negative is still tiny compared to the post cursor without the reflection from the 1st to 5th post cursors. Therefore, we could reduce the digital to angle depth strength of all the 14 tab, such that the most area consuming depth can be decreased significantly. Here are a summarized image of why we need a 14 tab or dual summer 
in a DFE. Most DFEs change is to meet the closed loop feedback timing in one big time, especially the first step due to its tiny input stream at a simpler input after a very high insertion loss. Even though the CTOE will boost the tiny suite and reduce the sampler's clock to day. The loading in the summer might be too big to have a short settling time. Fortunately, we could increase the cross through timing between the first most changing tab and the rest OK tab through the split summing amplifiers and summing nodes such that all the tab can meet the one UI timing at the same time. Unfortunately, to meet all kinds of channels, especially a highly defective response due to the package or connectors impedance discontinuity, we must add lots of number of tabs, could be up to 32, to remove the defective ISI. Then, a large number of tabs loading in the summer will still fail the timing for non first tab ones. Fortunately, those defective ISI only occurs at a few post cursors, but not all the 32 post cursors. Therefore, we could implement a flexible folding tab DFE with fewer overheads than the traditional four tab DFE. Since the folding tab help reduce the capacity of loading at the summing node, the complexity of feedback path and the size of a deck. The floating tab DFE is an efficient technique to remove the reflection induced ISI beyond the critical tab number of traditional DFE circuit implementation in terms of performance, power, area, PPA benefits. Thanks for watching. Before you go, if you are Benefiting from raw circuit images, I would love to hear your feedback and pressure your comments down below. Lastly, pressure the video link with the people who may be benefiting from it.